G'day gamers, Ranger Tony here, and we are back with another Pathfinder Kingmaker build video. So today I'm going to introduce a build that people have been asking for on my streams a fair bit. One of the most common uh, classes that people say they want to play is the Cleric. And I haven't done a build on Cleric before, so we're going to do one. So we're going to dive in. Everything's standard here. So clerics are strange, in my opinion. But they are one of the base classes that existed in role-playing from day dot. The original four classes were fighter, cleric, thief, and mage, or wizard. Um, so clerics have been around for a long time. And they are... A divine spellcaster. They get their powers from a deity, and unlike a wizard who studies his spell book and memorizes his spells each day, and then once he casts them, the memory of them leaves his mind and he has to memorize them again before he can and cast them. The cleric prays to their deity and receives the spells directly from their deity, and then they can cast them at any time that they need to. Um, and as a cleric, you're pretty powerful. You've got access to some divine spells that are just as powerful as some arcane spells, and in fact, you have some spells which are exact copies of some arcane spells. Clerics in Pathfinder can cast spells like Fireball and Scorching Ray, and they can't. Uh, they can even do Lightning Bolt, I think, or well, they have their own version of it. Um, but they got some very powerful spells. They can do a lot of damage to individuals or groups, just as arcane spellcasters can. But they can use more weapons, and they can use more armor than a wizard can. You shouldn't consider a cleric a frontline fighter, but you can do it if you're careful, okay? Because you've got that armor, um, you can be a little bit tanky if you want. Your primary role for most clerics is to be the healer in the party. And we'll get to that in a minute, how that mechanism works. Um, but let's have a look at races first okay so i'm just we're not going to i'll just go straight forward here now which race is good or bad for clerics well humans of course are the default standard the two extra ability points you get and the extra feat and the extra skill that you get at first level means that any class works well with humans so humans will make great clerics no doubt about it elves are okay but i suppose the thing i didn't mention is the primary attribute of a cleric is their wisdom and i consider the secondary attribute is constitution it's not really but if you want to be able to live long enough to heal your party and keep them going, and remember, you're a healer, that is primarily your role, then constitution will help you with that. So you should generally look at a higher constitution. There are some exceptions, I'll do those in possibly in other videos, but I consider wisdom to be primary, constitution to be secondary, and then you can go from there. So elves, humans make great clerics. Elves make okay clerics, but they have that negative to constitution, which means you probably don't want them a frontline healer. Okay, so there are some other cleric builds, which I will probably do in the future, which elves will be better suited to. But as a frontline healer, uh, they're not as suited as other classes. Dwarves, who have a bonus to both wisdom and constitution, make great clerics um and you know in fiction even in this game there's lots of colorful dwarf clerics out there um you know you can play the beer swilling dwarven cleric till your heart's content gnomes with their bonus to constitution don't make bad clerics um they don't have the bonus to wisdom of course but you know they do okay without it 
The minus to their strength can be a little bit of a detriment if you want to be in combat a little bit, but if you're going to hang back more, perfectly fine. Halflings, again, uh, minus to, to strength, not great if you're going to be up the front. Uh, dexterity, we're not really using in this build, um, and they don't have bonuses to anything else. So they'll be probably a little bit better than an elf, but they're not going to be as good as other races. Half elves and half orcs are, you know, they're, they're pretty much the same. If you don't want to play a human um, and you don't want to play a dwarf, half elf, half orc are fine. Asimir. Asimir can make great clerics. If you pick the Lawbringer Asimir, you will get a bonus to Constitution and Wisdom, and you also get my favorite spell, Hold Person Once a Day. So Asimir clerics can be really good if you're looking for a good or neutral aligned cleric. Now, I don't normally say this because I don't really play evil and I have no desire to but if you want to play an evil cleric then a, a foul spawn or hell spawn tiefling will work wonders okay you're getting that constitution and wisdom bonus in both of those but you're also getting a lot of other stuff that makes it really good to be an evil cleric okay you can try and play the good cleric but i i don't know Okay, so in this example, I'm actually going to now go back and pick a different portrait and we're going to do a Dwarven Cleric because, you know, Dwarves make good Clerics. There's no doubt about it. So let's make sure we pick Dwarf. We go to Class. And then we go to Cleric. So let's talk about the Cleric Overview. So as you can see here, their class progression well, it's, it's basically empty. Now, partly that's because you do get some things here that are fairly spread out once you, once you pick your domains. Okay, so that's, uh, we'll go through that. So as a standard cleric, you have to pick a deity. That deity determines what your alignment can be, and it also determines which domains you can pick now the domains are a little bit like the um the spell focuses that you can do as a wizard but they're not working on classes like transmutation enchanting necromancy they're actually in a separate group called domains and they cover things like fire or earth or law or combat things like that. I think combat's actually called war or something, but there are a bunch of those. And you'll see what's available when you pick your deity. So your deity affects your alignment. It also affects the domains that you can pick. Okay. Um, so as a straight cleric, we get to pick two domains. And these give you favored spells as well. And some of these spells will be spells that you can't get any other way than taking those domains, all right? Um, we also get access to the cleric proficiencies, which mean we can use all simple weapons, light armor, medium armor, and shields. And you can also use the favored weapon of your deity, right? Um, and that's a big thing because there's not a lot of choice with weapons otherwise. And finally, you get the ability to detect magic and you can identify uh, items and spells and things like that. And then we have channel energy. And this is another big thing. And this is where the healing aspect of clerics come in. So a number of times a day, you can channel energy. And you can either, you make a, you make a choice at the start whether you're going to channel positive energy or negative energy. Positive energy heals anything around you and harms undead. So any living thing around you gets healed, any undead around you gets harmed. If you channel negative energy, it does the opposite. Any living thing around you gets harmed, any undead around you get healed. So it doesn't say it, and I don't think it really enforces it, 
but channeling negative energy is something that you would only really do if you're more evil aligned than good aligned. I don't know if there is any penalties. If anyone does know, please put them down in the comments, but I don't think there's any penalties to your alignment if you pick a good cleric and you decide to channel negative energy, whether that over time forces your alignment towards evil or not, I don't know. Um, but the other thing that you get as part of your channel energy, so you can do that and a couple of times, a few times a day and it heals a certain amount of points to everything around you or harms a certain amount of points. The other thing that you can do is you can take any spell that you have memorized and convert it to a healing spell of the same level at any time. So if my cleric at level one uh, memorizes uh, bless three times, for example, he can take one of those bless spells and turn it into a cure light wounds instantaneously, you know, in the middle of battle or whatever, he can just say, I don't, I want to convert that spell to cure light wounds and do it and it will work. So that is how you heal. You really shouldn't, when you pick the spells that your cleric is going to take any given day, you really shouldn't pick the heal spell from that level. Because instead, what you want to do is convert one of the spells you haven't used yet to a heal um, as you need to. So that's, that's how that all works. And conversely, if you say that you want to channel negative energy, then... Um, you can convert any of your spells into a harm spell. So cure, sorry, um, harm, you know, create light wounds or invoke light wounds or whatever it's called. Uh, inflict light wounds, I think it is. Um, so that is, is that side of things. So that's the basic cleric. Um, at high levels, very, very powerful, uh, able to do a lot of healing, like, and eventually you can resurrect, you know, someone who has been completely disintegrated um, and destroyed, you can resurrect them, all that type of stuff. I'm going to very briefly discuss the subclasses and then we'll go on with the build, okay? The Crusader. Now, if you've seen any of my streams and videos where I talk about the various classes, one of the things I say is a lot of classes are very derivative. Um, you know, Paladin is really just a militant cleric. Druid is really just a nature cleric. Um, in a lot of ways, Ranger is just a sort of fighter cleric mix. Uh, who you know, fighter cleric Druid almost. Um, you know, so a lot of classes are a little bit just mixes of other things, and and I don't always like that. Although you know, I love Rangers, but. Rangers started out as being just a subclass of fighter, and that's why I liked them at that point, because they were more just archers. Um, but the Crusader is a weird one in this case, because, pal as I said before, paladins are the militant arm of the church, but this is what the Crusader is also meant to be. Um, so, you know, you can make a paladin by creating a cleric and then just deciding to concentrate more on combat and less on healing. Um, and that's what this one does. Um, you only get a single domain, right? Um, but you get Crusader bonus feats, which include being able to take heavy armor proficiencies, being able to take weapon, uh, martial weapon proficiencies, um, and a whole bunch of things like that. And you can take them uh, every five levels. Which, you know, is nice, and in fact, you can create some really good uh, cleric builds that way. If you want to take a divine spellcaster um, and have, you know, more spells than a paladin does, more spells than an inquisitor does, or what have you, then that's a really nice build. The Herald Caller is another weird one, because this is your cleric summoner. You're focused more on summoning. So when I said before that...
Using your channel positive or negative energy, you can convert any spell instantaneously to a healing spell. The Herald Caller can convert any of his spells instantaneously to a summoning spell. And strangely, that's a druid. That's what druids do. All right? So that's a, this is a weird one as well. And then finally, you get the Ecclesi Surge. And what this one is, it's more of a pure spell casting um, variant of the cleric. So you're much more limited in um, equipment. You, in fact, you you cannot use shields, any sorts of armor, or any sorts of shields, and you're really limited on weapons: club, dagger, heavy crossbow, light crossbow, quarter staff, and whatever the weapon is of your favorite deity. So. You are extremely limited uh, in your martial abilities as an Ecclesiothurge, but you are a pure spellcasting cleric, is what you are. And Tristan in the game is an Ecclesiothurge, even though you see him sometimes running into battle with a scimitar. So those are the subclasses. Um, I may do builds on a couple of these, in particular the Crusader, um, but let's let's continue on with the cleric. We're going to do a base cleric here. So we now have to choose our deity. So as I said, each deity, they give you an alignment and then they tell you a little bit about the deity and then they say what domains are available and what their favorite weapon is. Now, in some cases, you're going to be a little bit disappointed because the favored weapon is going to be a weapon that you could already get. Um, I believe you could already get the light crossbow if I'm... Uh, I'm trying to remember if a light crossbow is considered a, a simple weapon. But anyway, um, so what you're mostly going to want to do is sort of look around what alignment you're looking at, what... Um, domains you want to take and potentially what weapon you want to use so back in the old days clerics were limited to bludgeoning weapons so clubs maces flails warhammers that was sort of it but that's that's all gone now i mean they can still use those but they can use other simple weapons like knives and short swords and uh, you know other things like that um so it really comes down to what uh, what your choice is on whether what sort of alignment you want to play, and you know you've got lots of options there. So if you wanted to be lawful good, for example, you've got Ab Abadar, you've got um, Arastel, you've got Iamide, I think it is. You've got uh, Aurori and you've got Saren Ray, you've got Shellen, you've got Torag. You know, so you've got some you've got some options there. Now the other thing I'll say, in some of these it sort of tells you, for example, that uh Torag uh is a dwarven god. There is no limitations. I could be an elf who follows Torag. Or, as a dwarf, I could follow one of the elvish gods, or one of the, you know, orcish gods, or whatever. It doesn't matter. They don't limit you in that way, in any way. Now, this build that I'm going to show is a sword and board build. So you're going to have a one-handed weapon, and a shield that's going to be the idea behind but we're not going to focus on the weapon at all we're going to focus on being a little bit tanky so that we can take damage and protect our companions um, but what i wanted to point out is that there are options so for example if you were to take gorum you get a great sword which means you can use that there are no two-handed weapons available to clerics except for the quarterstaff two-handed melee weapons um so if you're going to want to take a two-handed weapon you're going to have to to find uh, a god that has 
a two-handed weapon as their favoured weapon. And I think Gorham is the only one. And he is the god of battle, basically. So you can definitely pick that. We are going to pick Torag, the... Um, the lawful good, neutral good, lawful neutral, father of creation, serious dwarven god of the forge, blah, 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 blah. Um, now, as I said, channel positive energy allows you to do uh, heal all living creatures or damage all undead in a 30 foot radius. Um, and also to channel stored spell energy into healing spells that you haven't prepared ahead of time. So we're going to take that and then we can see these are the domains that we are allowed to pick and these are the ones that we are not allowed to pick. And it's quite a few there, but that's always going to be the case because your deity will only have a limited number of domains. Um, and you can look at this and see. Now, what the domains give you is a couple of they give you a bunch of spells down the bottom here, domain spells, lead blade, effort armor, blah, blah, blah. So these are extra spells that appear at various levels that you can use that, that either are spells that you wouldn't normally get as a cleric, or if they are clerical spells, you're going to be able to use them more effectively because they're part of the domain that you have chosen, right? So you're gonna wanna have a look at that. And also you get uh, a couple of things that are, um, granted to you throughout the course of your uh, progression at various levels. Um, so if we were to take this artifice domain, for example, we get the aura, the aura of efficiency, which we can use to grant bonuses to saving throws against the effects of fatigue or exhaustion. Um, and we also get uh, at eighth level some damage reduction. Right, um, and so you can go through and have a look at all these. I'm not going to go through all of these domains because there are just way too many of them. Um, what we're going to pick for this one, um, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to pick good domain and protection domain as the two domains that I take. And you can now see that we get the good domain at first level giving us touch of the good and then later on we get holy lance from that and then from our protection domain we get resistant touch and then at eighth level we get aura of protection so we're not going to get a lot as we go through levels but uh where the where the cleric gets all of their good stuff is in their spells now as i said earlier Wisdom and Constitution are going to be our primary attributes. So I'm going to make my Wisdom 18, and then I'm going to get my... Um, oops, too much. I wanted to go 16 for Constitution, and then 16 for Strength. You can throw a little bit into decks if you want to try and help and bring your armor class up a little bit, but I've chosen to put some points into Strength so that when I do have to do damage, I can do a little bit more. Okay. Um, skill points, because wisdom is our primary attribute, we're going to be good if we pick things from the wisdom domain. So I'm going to pick both of those. And they will do you fairly well throughout the various adventures. But, you know, if you've played the game at all, you're going to want a fairly rounded set of skills throughout you may want persuasion on your main character. Um, but, you know, you can you can decide about that. And because of your strength, you could pick athletics. Unfortunately, constitution doesn't come into any of these. So there's really uh, nothing major that you can do there. So we'll do that. Now we get our abilities. And this is where it gets interesting. It recommends spell focus, and I'm gonna say that that's not really a good choice. And here's the reason. I mentioned earlier that you've got the domains for spells, but then you've also got the schools of magic that they belong to, such as transmutation, uh, um, evocation, um, enchantment, um, necromancy, things like that. 
The spell focus works on those schools, not on the domains at all, right? So unless you know exactly what spells you want to, to use commonly throughout the game, and you know what schools they belong to, trying to pick the right spell focus here is going to be really hard. For an arcane spellcaster, that's not as much of an issue because you will often, as an arcane spellcaster, particularly as a wizard, you'll often pick one school to specialize in, right? And so then you can use that spell focus immediately in that school and you're good. But the spells that a cleric uses will come from all schools. So I actually don't recommend taking spell focus. Instead, because I said that the, the things that we want to concentrate on here are healing and protection, we are going to take toughness first to help us stay alive just that little bit longer. All right. And we, you can see we only have two choices for our alignment here, lawful good or neutral good. Um, and so we're going to do lawful good, and we're done. So I'm going to come back, and we are going to go through each of the levels. Um, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so here we are. Let's go to level two. Um, and you'll notice we didn't get anything. That's going to be the standard. Every other level, we're going to get something, and that's going to be it. So every odd level, you'll get something good, except, you know, at level eight. Um, be, get used to it. That's just the way it works, unfortunately. So what are we going to take here? I recommend taking combat casting as early as possible because you are going to be in combat trying to cast to heal and to protect and you know maybe do damage or whatever. Um, resist the temptation to take a heavy armor proficiency because you're probably not going to want it. It will it doesn't grant you the ability to overcome the uh, spell failure of that armor. It just allows you to wear it. So it means that you're going to have more likely to have spell failure if you go to a heavier armor. Just stick with the armor that you can take. I recommend breastplates as probably one of the best armor for clerics. You'll see here we now got a bunch of new spells. So these are the second level spells. I'm going to go through spells at the end once we've gone through all of the levels. So let's keep going. Level four, we get another ability point, and really, I would just keep bumping wisdom because it's going to make your spells more effective. It's going to make them harder to be um, resisted and things like that. So that is definitely the way you want to go. At level five, we are going to come down here. We could take weapon focus, but as I said, this is a protective build. This is a, uh, so we're going to take shield focus instead, which just makes us more effective with our shield. It's going to keep us alive a little bit longer, enabling us to uh, look after our companions. And we start getting more spells. These are level three. So nothing at level six. As I said, it's going to be like that pretty much the entire way through with a few exceptions. Level seven. Um, let's take armor focus on medium armor at this point. Again, helping to keep us alive longer so that we can help our friends and we get some more spells there as well. And we get another ability point here again. Put that into Wisdom. We finally get these other abilities from our domains. Holy Lance and Aura of Protection. So 
that will be useful at that point. Those will all be different depending on which domains you've selected. So I'm not gonna go through what they do specifically. You'll have to look those up yourself and see which ones you really want. Um, so it does take a little bit of planning to play a cleric. Um, at level nine, we're going to come down here, and this one might be a little controversial, but we're going to take Die Hard. So this is like the ability that Half-Orcs have natively, whereby once your hit points reach zero, you don't immediately fall unconscious. You have one more round, and if you can get your hit points back up to a positive value, then you can keep going, but you've got one more round before you fall unconscious. Again, as a healer and as the party's healer, that's a really useful thing to have to keep you going so that you can uh, potentially heal yourself and then get back to healing your companions. Again, bunch of new spells, talk on those later. Level 10, nothing special here. Not sure what that resistant touch was all about. It said we got that last level as well. Um, level 11. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to come down here and we are going to take Iron Will. So we already have a strong will save because we have wisdom and that goes towards your will save. This is going to make it even stronger. So you are going to be really resistant to anything that tries to charm or dominate you or make you feared or anything like that. So it's going to work really well. Okay, so it looks like we just keep having that resistant touch. Actually, I think that resistant touch is a dwarven thing, if I remember rightly. Um, got more spells. Again, at, at 11th level, so that's going good. Level 12, we get another point. Again, we're gonna chuck that into wisdom. Nothing else going on for us there. Level 13. Now, we're getting to the point where there's a couple of things we could do here. Um, improved Iron Will. Yeah, I think we'll take Improved Iron Will at this point. So again, even better at um, at wisdom saves. So, you know, you're going to be really resistant to anything like that. More spells. 14. Nothing. 15. Now, I'm saying that I would take extra channel here. So this allows you to channel energy two more times per day. So channel your positive or negative, whichever you've chosen. Um, you can take that earlier if you want, but at this point, we've got most of the um, things that we can take that are really going to help us to be able to protect everybody. You could look at taking some teamwork feats here that have to do with protection. Um, but you know, that's, that's entirely up to you. Level 16, we get another point. So we're now going to get, we're up to plus 10, but you can look at our will save here. It's plus 20 at this point. Uh, it's, yeah, that's really as high as it's going to get, but we've done a good job getting it that high. Level 17. Now, it wants us to take weapon focus. I'm going to take it at this point, and we're going to take it in Warhammer because that was the weapon that our uh, god has as their favorite weapon. You, again, you could take that earlier, but I was trying to get all the really good protection stuff done first and make us more effective as a healer before I did that. But, you know... It's, it's entirely up to you. Some more spells. There's really not many spells at this point. Um, but there's fewer and fewer spells per level. Um, level 18. Nothing new here. 
level 19. And again, I wasn't sure what I wanted to take here. You could take things like improve critical. You could take things, you know, if you were sure what spells you wanted to take, you could take spell focus. Um, I'm going to just take another extra channel. So, you know, we now got an extra f four times because we're taking this twice. You can take that one as many times as you want to to just keep bumping it up. If you wanted to, you could become a channel master and take no skills but extra channel through the entire thing. And you'd just be out of channel energy all day long. Um, it probably wouldn't be a bad, a bad option. Um, and then finally, we get one more point at, at 20th level. It doesn't matter where you put it because you're not going to probably have enough to get that over to the next uh, modifier so we'll just put it into wisdom anyway and we are done so that's our that's our cleric build um you end up with three attacks per round um but at third level which isn't you know you're not a fighter but it's not too bad um and you will be able to use your weapon pretty effectively but your main thing will be your spells so let's have a look at that now so i'm not going to go through every single spell but i'm just going to point a few things out so first of all we have these two spells in this green what these are these are the spells given to you on that level by your domain so there's your there's your good domain spell there is your protection domain spell now um what spells are really useful at first level, apart from, again, as I said earlier, the healing spell on each level, Cure Light Wounds, don't put it in your memorized slots. Instead, you can convert, and I can show you, let's show you that right now before we go any further. So there's my Bless spell, for example. If I just click this little here, I can click on this, and I can immediately convert that to a cure light wounds spell and then i can cast it even though i did not have it memorized so it's that easy any of your spells just click the little up arrow on them no matter what level they are click the little up arrow convert them to a usable spell to a usable heal or inflict depending on whether you've picked positive or negative and you're set so let's go back what spells do you really want to keep an eye out okay bless affects everybody within 30 feet and gives them a plus one to their attack and helps them against fear so that's a nice um and it counters bane if you're evil you might like to use bane even if you're not evil you might prefer to use bane but i don't like having my enemies run away from me as much because you've got to hunt them down then i prefer to keep them near me so i can kill them uh, the same reason why I, I really don't recommend cause fear um divine favor is a nice early game buff for your weapons although i think you can use it for anybody you don't have it doesn't have to be you um shield of faith is a nice protection spell that you can take um early on remove fear um is really good to you know stop anyone who has been feared so everyone within 30 feet who is an ally will get this to help them overcome fear or remove the existing fears and the summon monster so most levels have a summon monster spell um, some levels have other summonings whether it's undead or whether it is elementals um, all of the summoning spells can be quite handy if you're going to use them a lot remember if you take the um if you take the herald caller um class you will be able to convert any of your spells to a summon spell so don't learn any of the summon spells take other you know learn other or memorize other spells and then just convert them automatically to summons as you want to use them level two. Oh, the other thing I, I don't know if i pointed out really well these spells can be unique so protection from an evil and protection from alignment I think most clerics get those at level one, but they might not. Um, and they're going to be different for each of the domains. So I'm not going to go through, I'm not going to really talk about those spells 
at all. Although I know bark skin is one that I think most clerics can get and it's quite good. But the other spells in the spells in first level, aid is quite good, but it's only one creature. It doesn't affect everybody. So that's its down, downside. Bone Shaker, even though it's a necromancy spell, and you might not want to be considered a necromancer, um, it does reasonable damage to an opponent. It only does one opponent, but it does reasonable damage. Uh, Restoration Lesser is useful to remove um, the effects of... Um, Ability damage and stuff like that from poison and diseases and stuff like that. Remove paralysis can be good, but I don't see that coming into the game very often. Um, summon lesser monster as well. Summon small elemental, although I don't find the elementals quite as useful, but they're not bad. Hold person. The spell that saves your ass in so many ways if you do if you take nothing else from this build video you spam hold person when you can get it i will often learn multiple hold persons on a, on anyone who can get it i'll get them to to memorize multiple copies of it because it is super useful but it doesn't work against animals it even doesn't work against some things that you might think it would. So it works against humans and demi-humans. And if you haven't heard the term demi-humans before, that is what the other races that you can play were generally called. So elves, dwarves, halflings, gnomes, half-elves, all that sort of stuff are generally referred to as demi-humans, right? So it works against all of those. But things that it doesn't work against that you think it might... I don't think it works against goblins, but it definitely doesn't work against kobolds or mites. Um, and you'd think it might. So once you go and do the main thing and you go to the the um, the old sycamore and you've got the mites and the kobolds battling each other, whole person will not work against either of those groups. So don't try it. But it does work really good against the trolls. So it's a, it's a good way to handle trolls in this game. But just there are a lot of general humans and demi-humans as opponents, and it works really well against them. So if you take nothing else away from this um, build video, hold person is your friend, and you want a lot of it if you can. Third level spells. I know for a fact prayer is available to all, as is protection from energy, and they're both fairly good. Um... Dispel magic is okay, but it's situational. You may learn that spell the minute you get it, and you might find that you almost never use it. But if you've got an opponent who has buffed themselves or put some sort of debuff on you, it's great to try and get rid of it. It won't always work, but it's great to try and get rid of all of that. Um, you know, to remove a haste from an opponent, uh, to remove a slow from you, to remove a hold person, all of those sorts of things. Um, the spell magic can be really useful for that. Um, remove curse, likewise, can be helpful, although that's something that you're generally going to want to do outside of combat rather than inside. Um, as well as remove disease, resist en enemy, resist energy. I'll get that right. Resist energy communal is quite good. Um, doesn't resist as much energy damage as protection from energy does but it's still quite good and then you've got two sort of summons here you've got summon monsters level three and you've got animate dead now i'll note here this in the spell descriptor says evil i'm not sure if using that spell um actually pushes your alignment towards evil it might but i don't know um, magical vestment is also another good spell because it it basically buffs your armor um, and it lasts a long time. Okay, so you're looking for spells that are going to give you some sort of protection for a while. Level four. Um, again, protection from energy communal, really nice. So this is better than the um, resist energy communal because that was just a single person protection from energy we now have an entire group 
protection from energy that is a spell that's available i'm pretty sure to all clerics so we're not going to worry you don't have to worry about that you can use that restoration is a good spell but i think you need to have some diamond dust to cast it i'm not sure yes you need uh two diamond dust to cast it so be aware of that but apart from that it's quite good and um the summons so summon monster summon medium elemental now there are things in this level like crusader's edge like dismissal right um and i think even divine power but they're very no not divine power but crusader's edge and dismissal are very specific use cases so crusader's edge really only works against creatures that are outsiders and dismissal only works against extra planar creatures so if you know you're coming across those sorts of creatures great grab that spell and be ready to use it but if you're not don't leave it sitting there don't memorize it every day or don't pray for it every day because it's it's not going to help you all that much level five spells then um bone shatter is an upgraded version of bone shaker really nice uh only one opponent but a nice spell nonetheless um breath of life is a good spell to um to help get someone back on their feet uh in, you know apart from the cure light wounds mass um the burst of glory is available i'm pretty sure to everybody and it's quite good it gives you a, gives a bonus to everybody doesn't last all that long because it's only one round per level rather than say one minute per level but it uh it can be useful to buff everybody up um you've got cleanse which removes you know heals and then removes a whole bunch of bad conditions so it's a really nice thing to have although you may not use it in combat very often you might use it after combat uh, flame strike the first of the really big damage dealing spells for a cleric um, and probably one of the most well-known ones if you do know clerics um, and then you've also got the raise dead here um, you know the big necromancy spell requires a diamond so be aware of that and uh, some more summons here now you do have things like slay, li slay living um, really situational because you know it um sorry raise dead isn't a necromancy it's a conjuration it's it's basically raising one of your companions from the dead uh, it's not you know a necromancy whatever um but slay living it's it's actually fairly easy for them to save against it so you and they just take damage instead um or they just take damage anyway but yeah i i Anytime I've looked at it, it never really felt like it was all that good. Level six. Um, Chains of Light is like an extra powerful hold person because it doesn't, it's any creature. It's not just people. Um, so it's the high level one that you want. Um, Blade Barrier is really nice. It lasts for a long time, one minute per level rather than one round per level. And it immobilizes and does damage to anything that tries to move through it. So very nice. They can save to, to do half damage and to keep moving through, but really, really good. Cold Ice Strike is a nice area of effect, although it's a line, but it's a it's a it's an area of effect spell doing a lot of damage. Um, you've got the you know dispel greater magic, which is the greater version of the dispel magic we had previously. Um, heal is the big healer here i'm i don't think this one um replaces because i'm pretty sure it's cure mass wounds moderate is the one that you can convert any six level spell to if you're doing the channel positive energy so you might want to learn some heals uh, to overcome that um harm and hellfire ray like hellfire ray again it says it's evil in the descriptor so i don't know if that affects your alignment it does do a lot of damage but i found it's not quite as good as um 
Scorching Ray in, in some cases, because you just don't always get the extra damage that Hellfire Ray can do. Harm is the opposite of the heal. Um, I don't know. If you're evil and you want to use it, great, but I don't think it's really all that great. Um, Stone Skin, where did I see that? Uh, Stone Skin Communal, yeah. Really nice. Um, and the Stone Skill spell itself was back in a few levels. And then you've got your summons here. So you've got uh, Summon the Elemental there. Um, was there not? No, there's no other summon. Uh, although there's the Elemental. No, that, not that one. Um, Plague Storm. I don't know. It, it's an area of effect spell. It lasts for a while, but yeah. I really don't know. Undead to death, good to get rid of undead. Um, so a nice use for some necromancy there if you want to go that way. But yeah, those are the main ones. Level 7. Um, look, a lot of these are, re again, really sort of situational. So you can use Bestow Grace of the Champion on someone, but they have to be lawful good. You can use arbitration, but this one, if you're, it only really sort of neutral are the only ones that don't get affected by it. Um, the same with blasphemy. Um, so be careful with some of these. The ones that sort of do work well, um, holy word, I think is available to everybody. And it does... Um, it, it's it's pretty good in its effects. Um, you've got resurrection again to you know uh, resurrect. You've got these good summons here, elementals and monsters. Um, they're the ones that I would be looking for on level seven. Uh, some of these other ones are just you know, you know create undead. That's fine, but it's again it's evil, so you got to be looking for that. Um, level eight. The ones that I looked at here that were good, Holy Aura lasts for a little while, but it does some pretty good stuff. It buffs pretty well um, all the allies. Firestorm is going to do a lot of damage. Um, Storm Bolts is going to do a lot of damage. And you've got, again, a couple more uh, summons. If you're not good, then you might want to use, if you're evil, you might want to use the Unholy Aura rather than Holy Aura. Um, and again, some of these other spells are just a little bit situational or just don't really do as much as I would normally like. You know, they're too easy to save from or whatever. Level 9. Uh, I'm pretty sure Summon Monster 9 is, is always available, so that's a summon that you'll want. Um, but apart from that, the only other spell that isn't the the level's heal spell is Polar Midnight. Um, it's an interesting one. It's just a cold-based one. Energy Drain, yeah, but I tend to feel it's a bit evil sort of thing. So uh, Polar Midnight is the main one that I would go for here. Right, so that's it, guys. That is my run-through of... A standard sort of bog standard you know your protecting healer cleric build i hope you enjoyed this vi this video if you did keep uh you know leave any comments and um tell me what you thought and i'll see you for the next build video thanks a lot bye